Hey guys, welcome back to day 10 of this Winter Wonderland series. Today is the final tutorial of this series. I have loved it so far. Today we're going to be working on these two Christmas slash winter snow globe tumblers. I wanted to put together something that was quick and easy, minimal effort, but maximum impact and looked high end. And so we're going to work on these snow globes i got them from stainless steel depot they were only five dollars when i purchased them so super inexpensive super quick to put together it's only got one coat of epoxy on each cup so not a lot of effort you can do the rhinestones while you're sitting on your couch having a movie night very little effort so i love how they turned out i thought that i would throw it together um, if you had any last minute gift ideas or if you had a last minute addition to a christmas party uh, or last minute invite something like that and you wanted to throw something together that was handmade this would be a good option for you so we're going to start out with these two glitters one is from chase ray it's called winter mint the second glitter is from Peachy Olive that is called Festive Babe. I will have discount codes for both of those stores linked below as well as codes for the epoxy, the rhinestones, and the vinyl that I use on the snowflake tumbler. So if you are recreating this or purchasing any of that, go ahead and use those discount codes to save you 10%. We're gonna start out by putting some painter's tape along the bottom edge of this. This is just to prevent any spillage of the glitter from going off into the sides, making a huge mess. It is pretty messy, I will tell you. That is the one thing about these snow globes that I don't love, I hate messes. So we are going to put some tape around that and then I'm just going to put some glitter in the bottom like you see here. I'm not measuring, I would say probably anywhere between a quarter and maybe a third of the cup uh, at the bottom is filled up. And we're gonna put the glitter in first. I would not recommend putting any liquid in first. Some people do. I run into huge issues when I do that in the glitter sticks. So I would recommend just dry glitter. And then once you've got it filled to the amount that you are looking for, I'm just gonna take another piece of of painter's tape and just rub it around the entire cup to make sure we've got any of that loose glitter picked up that it's not going to get stuck under the outside of the epoxy once we go in with the epoxy that it's not going to prevent us from getting a good seal on the bottom in this hole so make sure that's all cleaned up and then we're gonna go in with our next steps The thing that I like least about snow globes, besides the mess as I had mentioned previously, is the fact that not all of the solutions that I've used give a good mm, float, I guess I would say. So I find that my glitter falls back to the bottom of the cup really quickly and I don't like that because then you're just stuck with glitter at the bottom of the cup and a clear glass cup seeing the liquid through that's in your actual cup so i was playing with solutions and i this was the very first thing that i threw together it is about a third of distilled water a third of the elmer's magic i want to say slime i'll have it linked for you guys below i don't remember the exact name and then a third of vegetable glycerin and i just put it into a little plastic like throwaway cup and i was playing with it to see kind of what sort of suspension I would get. And this stayed suspended for hours. I don't know if I just cracked the suspension glitter code or what, but this solution worked really well. I don't know if somebody else has come up with it. Like I said, I was just throwing things together and I am pleasantly surprised. So I will definitely now be doing more snow globes in the future knowing that I can get something to suspend without it falling really quickly within, you know, minutes of it being shaken up. So I just put that liquid in. I did leave a tiny little bubble at the top to make sure that there was a little bit of air in there to allow that glitter to float around. And once you shake it up, it will actually move. Um, but you're gonna try and get a small, tiny little bubble as small as possible. Um, just continue to fill it and shake it as you see fit. And then once you've got it as full as possible, I let that sit overnight just to let it gas off and let any of the extra air bubbles float up to the top. 
And then once all of the air bubbles are out, I am going to use some Gorilla Glue tape to put it over that hole to make sure that none of that liquid seeps out. And then we're gonna cover it in UV resin. You do wanna make sure that prior to taping that hole closed that you have rubbed it off with either rubbing alcohol or um, acetone. The glycerin is really, really oily. It feels oily. The, the tape is not going to stick to it if you have any of that glycerin or that slime, magic slime activator um, on the bottom of the cup. So make sure your surface is clean just like you would with regular epoxy. Tape that and then make sure all of that is sealed in really, really well under that tape. And then, like I said, we're gonna go in with UV resin. I just use a gloved hand and put one layer across the entire base of the cup so nothing has a chance to seep out. And then once that is fully cured, I'm gonna go directly into the decals since we're working on a glossy surface. We don't have to worry about epoxying first. It's gonna be shiny under the decal. This is a white back decal from Gracefully Created. I will link the decal in the description below as well. I'm not sure if she's still running her Black Friday sale. She was at the time I checked this over the weekend, but she may not be now. So I will have to check on that for you guys and I will post it in the description as well. But we're just gonna apply that directly to that glossy glass surface and then it will be ready for its first and final coat of epoxy. And this is just a little hack that I use to make sure everything is straight. I just put a piece of painter's tape at the top and bottom to make sure the gapping between the painter's tape is equal on both the top and the bottom to ensure that the decal is placed directly in the center and it's even. For the second mug, I'm gonna use textured silver metallic and the white pearlescent vinyl from Tech Wrap Craft. I'm gonna cut those snowflakes out between one and a half and two inches. Some of them were full snowflakes, some of them were the offsets. Wanted to give a variation of sizes and styles. Once I get those snowflakes applied, I'm gonna put that on my turner with a coat of polycrylic just to make sure none of the snowflakes and vinyl lifts before we put our coats of epoxy on. And after that's dry, we will go in with the epoxy work. I removed the rubber little mouthpiece, straw piece, whatever you want to call it, and then I just prepped this bamboo lid with some red acrylic paint, and then I mixed in Beloved from Peachy Olive Glitters into epoxy. I did about a half-half mix of epoxy and glitter, and we're just going to apply that directly to the top of the tumbler, making sure not to get it in that little straw hole, and then we're going to work around the edges as well, but making sure that it's not getting underneath the seal that's along the edges or on the bottom side of the top of the lid, if that makes sense. Um, basically anywhere where there's yellow wood, you don't want that epoxy glitter mixture to be. So we're going to place that around the top edges and once that's all in place, we're gonna put that under the UV light for a couple of rounds of 99 seconds just to make sure it is fully coated, cured, all of the above and that we're not gonna have any issues once we go in with the rhinestones. Some people do go directly over the acrylic paint or spray paint with rhinestones. I have never done that. I'm paranoid that I'm gonna do all that rhinestone work and then once I wash my cup, that paint is gonna seep out from underneath and it's gonna get on the rhinestones, it's gonna look bad. So I always just play it safe and do epoxy over that, but that is totally personal preference and up to each person and their design. So I'm gonna make sure that is cured and then we're gonna go in with the rhinestones. I did not record the white lid because you guys don't need to see the repetitive process on both of these lids. 
but basically I'm going to take my mixture here and we're gonna work around the edges first. So I'm gonna line a circle around that straw hole there and then we're gonna go around the outer edges, line that as well. That's just to make sure that when we're putting our rhinestones in place that nothing is going to fall off the edge, that everything is gonna stay centered directly on that lid and it's not gonna have any you know, room for half rhinestones to be placed over the edge and such. So just working around edge first and then we're going to work in the center. I made this custom mix of red, white, and silver from the rhinestones in the Flynn Sisters Supply Shop website. As I mentioned in the beginning, I will have a discount code for you guys for these stones as well in the description box. I just mixed up some stones in medium siam, opal, white, luminous, or luminous white maybe is what they're called. I'll link them for you guys. Um, and then the crystal, and I use sizes SS6 through SS20, and I just mixed equal parts of red, white, and silver, and then we're just going to apply those using liquid fusion, making sure not to use too much glue so it doesn't squeeze up under those stones and encase the stones, as I've mentioned about 100 times in the past 10 days of the tutorials that I've put out. So once I get all of those stones on top placed, I'm going to use the luminous white stones in, I want to say probably SS12 or 16s around the edge, whatever fits best um, along the edge, but I'm just going in with the white stones and when I lay them down, I'm not going to be super, super cautious that they are all in a straight line. I'm basically just getting them around the rim and then I'll go around and kind of pinch them as I go around about every quarter of the way just to make sure they're all in a straight line, but you do have some working time with this glue. So don't be too fussy when you first lay them down. You don't have to go stone by stone to make sure they're in line. Just make sure you're doing them about every quarter. So once I have that completely applied to the cup, I let these stones sit for about 24 hours before I wash the lid. So none of that glue gets all goopy and comes out from underneath those stones. You do want to wash them before giving them away because the wax from the pen does come off on the stones and it dulls the stones. But once that is all washed, this cup is completely done. Don't forget to put those little rubber seals back in the straw hole. And after that, everything is finished. So let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell button for future notifications. We'll go back to every Sunday upload for tutorials in the future. And I hope you guys enjoyed this 10-day series. And I will see you guys in the next video.